when I was about 11 or 12, probably about 12, I got introduced to a game in Australia called Polo Cross. And, and it's, and it's kind of like what we call poor man's polo in America. In America, you know, each person in the team's got four horses. Well, in Australia, we're all fucking poor. So, it, you know, we, we just had one horse and we rode it four times. You know what I mean? So it's what they call poor man's polo. And it's a very far, it's like lacrosse. It's literally like the game of lacrosse you have in America, except we do it on horseback. So it's very physical, a lot of galloping, a lot of running into people. And as a kid, I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. You got to gallop around, beat the shit out of people, run into people and chase people around and throw a ball around. That was like the ultimate for me as a kid. But because I was trying to play polo cross with such shitty horses that weren't very well trained and I wasn't trained, it wasn't a very fun experience and I didn't really get very far. That's when a big breakthrough happened is I got my first, my parents saved up a thousand dollars and bought me a, a horse that had had some training. Well, at least looking back on it, it was still pretty shitty broke, but at, back then it was way less shitty than what I had, so it was good. And got me a mare that her name was Bess, that she'd played the game of polo cross for several years and I at least could somewhat control her and get her around the field. Well, once that happened, my ability kind of shot off and I really started making a lot of progress uh, with that game. And I got invited to the, the state championships in Wondowan in Queensland. And uh, that's when the whole horsemanship thing took off for me because typically Australian polo cross riders are really good riders. Like they can gallop and ride and very active and physical, but the horsemanship, I don't know what it's like now, but at least back then it sucked pretty good. And the horses weren't that well trained. But our ball skills were so handy, we could pick up a ball at a flat gallop with a with a racket and a net and, and never miss a beat. You know, so we almost had to have exceptionally good ball handling skills because our horsemanship was so shitty and we and you know, remember you're galloping down a field, you know, four horses abreast, like a chariot. And I'm not talking loping down the field. I mean cowboys and Indians fucking galloping. And one guy's on your left, the, op the one guy's on your left stopping you going left, his teammate's on the right, and, he and you're allowed to whack it. When you've got the ball in this racket, you're allowed to dislodge the ball from their racket. And how you do that is you're not allowed to grab the racket or their ball, but you can hit it with your racket. So as you're riding down, you're galloping down the field, one guy stops you from turning left, the other guy's right on your right, and he's galloping beside you, flogging your stick with his stick to try to dislodge the ball. And there might be three or four horses in a breast galloping down to the end of the field to score a goal. So I'm, I want to set the tone here that this is not just pony loping around, this is some rank shit. And you're not allowed to hit people with the racket, but you always hit people with the racket, meaning that you're not allowed to deliberately hit them with the racket, but you can whack the fuck out of their hands. You can rack, whack the, you got to whack the racket on an upward um, trajectory. You couldn't whack straight across or whack down. So you could always whack up, but it had to be on a slight angle. But you'd always get your hands tore up and they'd whack you on the elbow and shit like that. So, you know, so when you're in that situation, you're in the middle and you're galloping and one guy's blocked you, the other guy's attacking you here. If you've got a horse that can stop really good and you can just go, whoa, and he'll drag his ass and the other guy's just gallop past, then you can duck in behind him and set up, set up the situation. Well, obviously a big stop on a polo cross horse is the biggest advantage you can have. But imagine three horses galloping. What do horses do when they get to galloping? They get to running off a little bit, don't they? So if you could have a big stop to where you could just stop and check, stop and check, stop and check, you could obviously get yourself out of a lot of trouble, okay? So I lacked any real horsemanship skills, but I really had good bull handling skills. And that's when a guy, um, shit, what was his name now? Donnelly, something Donnelly, or my mother would remember this, I can't remember. He's an old guy, I remember his face now. He walked up to my mother and said, your, your son's got a lot of ability for this game, but you know his horsemanship's so bad, he needs help with that. So that's when she recommended that I go to a Gordon McKinley horsemanship school. And that's the first time I ever heard of Gordon McKinley. So the next year, my parent, grandparents and mother drove me 22 hours from Cairns, which is like on the Great Barrier Reef, 
in Australia, it's in Queensland, up in the top right-hand corner. I grew up on the beach, Great Barrier Reef. For people that don't know, it's kind of like Miami, Florida. That's where I grew up. You know, Tropic of Capricorn, it's hot as shit, sand, beaches, stuff like that. That's kind of where I came from. And um, that's kind of why I hate cold country so much, because I went, I grew up in tropical, you know, areas to freezing your ass off in Ohio, or somewhere like that. It wasn't really appealing to me. So uh, I went to this horsemanship clinic in Longreach, Queensland, Australia, 22 hour drive, borrowed a horse to get there, to use at the clinic. And when I saw Gordon work with the horses, that's when everything opened up for me. Because as a kid, I was always very inquisitive about asking questions about horse training, wanting to know answers, trying to get things better. But I struggled really getting any very good advice because the people around me that were I was asking, they weren't very good either. But my attitude is, if you didn't suck as bad as me, you gotta be better than me. So I've always had a desire to learn and get better, and I've never had an ego about asking people questions. Even to this day, I love asking questions about horses and anything, and not even horses, anything I'm interested in, I will be a student overnight, like instantly be a student and start asking questions. Went to this clinic and everything opened up for me. Everything I was struggling with, everything that I was frustrated about, he had an answer for, he had an exercise to fix it. Things came together for me very, very quickly. And that's when I really had found my hero. But I knew at that point I was close to 13, I suppose. And at that point I realized I knew what I wanted to do for a living. I wanted to train horses for a living. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do up to that point with my life. I loved playing pole lacrosse, I did love that. But you couldn't really make a living playing pole lacrosse. You couldn't make any money doing it. But when I met Gordon, I was like, and then Gordon actually told me in the clinic that I started asking questions like, can you get paid to train horses? This is how green I am. And he said, yeah, you can get paid to ride people's horses. I'm like, holy shit. If you can get paid to train horses, that's what I want to be. This stuff's for fun. I'll fucking do it for fun. You're telling me I can get paid to do it? So that's what lit a fire for me to want to actually train horses is that I love to do it and you can get paid to do it. So what better gig as a kid to do that, you know? So he... Um, he must have seen something in me in this particular clinic because he walked up to my grandparents and mother and said, if Clinton ever wants to come down to my property during school holidays, we want to say school holidays. In Australia, we have all, round, all year round school. So you have eight weeks of school, two weeks vacation, eight weeks of school, two weeks vacation. And at the end of the year, around Christmas, you get like five, six weeks vacation or holidays, they call it. And because remember in Australia, summertime is our December. So when it's Christmas, it's hot as hell. And over here it's snowing. So it's it's reverse of what America is, the season. So when it's summer here, it's winter there and vice versa. So every eight weeks, I took him up on this offer and I'd get on a Greyhound bus and my parents would send me down, you know, 18 hours down to Rockhampton. And uh, I'd spend two weeks with him. He's lived in his house. His wife, Ina, took care of us. And I trained horses with him. When I say trained horses, I was probably a bigger pain in the ass than what I was helpfulness, but I cleaned stalls, I fucking fed, I did whatever the hell he told me to do because I was just so excited to be there. And the fact that he wasn't charging me to be there, I didn't really give a shit what he told me to do. I was gonna try to do it the best I could and, and help him as much as I could. And then after doing that for about two years, every eight weeks going down for two weeks, um, I just absolutely fell in love with training horses. And then I said to him, I don't want to be at school anymore. I'm not very good at school. I was never a good student. And in fact, from 13 to 15, when I left school, I was actually training other kids' horses in the neighborhood. I'd charge them 50 bucks a week. If I fed the horse, I charged them 50 bucks a week. And I had like three horses in training, but I'd ride them every day when I got home from school. So instead of doing my homework, I thought, fuck it, let's just go train some horses. I was making 150 bucks a week training horses. I made another 80 bucks a week where I'd push trolleys. I don't know what they call them, push like the shopping carts, you know, like Kmart and Walmart and all that shit, how they'd send boys out there to pick up all the trolleys. We call them trolleys or shopping carts. I made an extra 80 bucks a week doing that. I'd do that on the weekends and late at night. So, you know, 150 and 80, you know, so 200, I was making $230 a week from 13 to 15 years old, that wasn't bad money for a 13, 14 year old kid, 230 bucks a week. Now, obviously my school work went to shit because I wasn't doing my homework, but I was, I was making some money at that age. It was good money for me. And I love training horses.